Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about planning for next semester. And you might think I'm crazy. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm just barely handling this semester. But I do know that we have some eager beavers within our department who always like to get ahead of things. So I want to talk a little bit about setting up next semester's classes as well. In particular, I want to talk about the idea of backwards design. Backwards design is a process by which you design classes. And with that, you have a three-step process. You identify the desired results, determine acceptable evidence for seeing those results, and then plan the learning experiences in order to gain the desired results that you want. This methodology is key because it allows for people to really think critically about what is most important in a class and come up with maybe three or four things that you would hope students remember a couple years after they finished your class. And it's very different than I think when I very first started, which was I was hired and I got the textbook and I said, okay, I've got these 12 chapters. I'm going to cover chapter one on week one, chapter two on week two, and just kind of went from there. And that was a perfect survival mechanism for my first time teaching, but it didn't really give me the process of thinking critically about what I wanted my students to learn. I was instead of just kind of following a formula that somebody else had developed. So let me share how I've used backward design in a class that I recently redesigned, which was my uh, human development class. It's a lifespan psychology class, so we go from conception to death. With that, I wanted students to be able to identify theories and how they relate to specific developmental stages. and once I had that goal in mind, I was thinking, okay, well, I need them to be able to learn how to do the theories, like understand what the theories are and who the theorists are and what those theories involve. But then I also need to get them involved with the different developmental periods so that they had a sense of how people changed over the lifespan and why those theories were different at different points in the lifespan. And what I determined the evidence that would be would be to have them do some sort of written explanation where they had to connect in those theories with specific examples that they had seen or learned about um, in real life. And why I chose that is because I find that often students, when they have to do something experiential and they have to apply what they've learned, it takes it to a whole new level and they learn it much more deeply and they remember it better later on. So the learning experience then that I planned from that was that I decided to have students do interviews or observations of people at every stage of our lifespan, essentially. So I couldn't have them do interviews the whole time, right? They can't go and interview an infant, but they could observe certainly infants or they could observe children, obviously with parental permission and such. Um, but then once the people were able to talk about their experiences and talk about what they were doing, they could interview people. So sometimes I had students interview people who were currently in that phase, and other times I had them interview people who were past that phase who were then reflecting upon the key experiences that they had had then. And I did this because I thought it provided a lot of variety in the learning experiences. But the outcome and what I was hoping they would be able to learn at each step is really the same, which is how does this theory fit in with this developmental period? And what evidence do we know of these theories working during this period? And what does it show us that people typically do during these periods? And ultimately, I have my students reflect back on the goals as part of um, a last observation that they do within the class. And often students do report that they find this activity really engaging and really memorable and that it also brought them personally closer together with friends and family because often students choose to interview or observe friends or family members. So I found the process of using backwards design to be very helpful for me in planning that class. And I did this really for each of the goals that I have and I only have three or four goals for every class that I have. Yes, I do cover all the content that probably the same lifespan textbook would do, but the emphasis in which I do it and the way in which I'm planning the learning activities is completely different than if I had just started from the textbook itself. So I hope you find this experience to be helpful for you and that 
you might want to consider looking at backwards design resources. I'll link a couple below, um, a video with one of the creators as well as a overall guide and plan on how to do backwards design if you wanted to do it on your own. Thank you and I'll see you next week. Bye.